March 2010. Lily Allen, the Queen of British Pop, is performing the opening number at the Brits. Up for three awards, she will go on to win Best Female Artist of the Year. It is an amazing wig. When it's on, yeah. it's fucking brilliant. Yeah. It's quite over the top, yeah. but it depends how far you want to take the performance. Yeah, that be... is quite silly. <laughs> 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 Mummy! What the hell is that? Silence. For Christ's sake, that looks terrible. It is actually kind of asymmetric. It kind of fans out more. We can pull it out more. Here. Mum, can you stop laughing? It's not funny, this is serious. Okay. Here, <laughs> like you got a cushion on your head. Do you see why I'm giving this up now? <laughs> but this will be her last Brits. Lily is retiring from pop. People that are really famous and successful and you know living in this mad world tend to die really early or kill themselves or die in a drug overdose and I'd rather not, so I figure I'm you know I'll go and eat. <laughs> Eat more. <laughs> Lily Allen, the face of Chanel, a multi-platinum album selling star and one of the world's most controversial young upstarts. I'd like to dedicate this song to Mr David Cameron. It's called Fuck You. Is ditching her A-list life and everything that goes with it. There was a point where I had an eating disorder. I used to vomit after meals. I wasn't happy. I really wasn't. I <laughs> Lily's risking it all on a new venture, a clothes shop. I love my new drawers. I want everyone to have the experience of being able to wear those items of clothing, whether they've got the money or not. This will be a crash course in retail. That's amazing. I've been earning a lot of money over the past five years, so I have no idea what your average girl would spend in a shop. The minute you go, oh, actually, no, I can afford 2000 but I'm giving it to you for £500. I go, stuff it, Lily. Lily's going into business with a sister she hasn't always gotten on with. I love the stables. I really do. We have this meeting book to So I don't miss appointments. I just don't do it. And she's using her own cash. The profit and loss statement says we're minus 52,000. Brilliant. Definitely need to go have a meeting with the banky wanky and ask for a loony loony. Lily's exit plan isn't just about business. I've met the person that I want to spend the rest of my life with. I want to take the next steps. <laughs> this is what happened. The good and the bad. It really frustrated Lily when she would read in the press that it was miscarriage and it, and it still like, it really fr it frustrates me when I read it. You know, it was a really long battle and I think that that kind of thing changes a person. The story of a girl who tried to get herself what we all take for granted. A normal life. <laughs> Emails aren't working. I'm about to have a really bad anger management day. March 2010. Lily Allen is in the process of making one of the biggest decisions of her life. Today is my birthday. No, it's not really. Um, I am um, headlining here at the O2. It's my final gig, really, of the Lily Allen tour that I've been on for how many years now? Yeah. About two. Yeah, just under two. Well, really, about five. And um, I'm quite looking forward to it. Hello. Hello. To it being over. <laughs> not the actual gig. <laughs> After two albums, Lily has chosen not to re-sign her contract with EMI. And the rumour is out that she's retiring from pop music, at least for the time being. My idea of hell would be doing this still in 25 years' time. I, I don't want to be Madonna, thanks. Look at her. <laughs> she's been <mental. laughs> so, No offence, but you know what I mean? Like, that's not what drives me. I want to have kids and I want to get married and I want to make sandwiches and cut the, what are those brown bits called? Crusts off. <laughs> She's 
like completely different from every other artist, you know, always speak to mine. She's a really, really nice woman as well. She says it how it is. Yeah. That's how I rap because they're out in the streets, yeah? That's the way she is. I'm not from the streets. <laughs> I don't know what street you're talking about. Regent Street, perhaps. <laughs> <laughs> Backstage with Lily is her older sister, Sarah. Yes, I like. I might actually have to just kind of reposition these bears. Ah. <laughs> I don't think it's really sunk in yet that this is the final gig. I'm bored. It's going to feel sad because I love going to Lily's shows. What would you like to drink on stage? Gak! No. <laughs> Cut! <laughs> no, one more. Sarah has just realised that the dress she's wearing is actually the dress on no, the cover no. of that um, tour programme. Uh. <laughs> now she just looks like a sort of crazed Lily Bam, Allen fan. No <laughs> It's been an amazing journey, and you know now is the time for an, a new journey. Oh God, I feel so like sentimental. It's my last gig. I feel really emotional. <laughs> I mean, like, look at where we are. This is what my home has been for five years. You know, hallways and tour buses and catering rooms. Stage. <laughs> what am I doing? <laughs> No, it's Sunday, isn't it? Monday's just tomorrow and it's going to be a different life. <laughs> Lily Allen is turning her back on packed arenas and adoring fans and taking the most backward step imaginable. She's swapping fame and fortune for a nine-to-five job. Monday morning, as London slowly comes to life, in a rented office above a sandwich shop, a short walk from Oxford Street, Lily Allen is starting her first day as a businesswoman. Lily's new business draws on one of the main loves of her life. I love clothes, for a start. You know, I love getting dressed up. Yeah, I've got that passion for fashion. Her big ambition is to open a vintage clothing store with a difference. If you can't afford the designer price tags, you can still live the dream for the day by renting the clothes. They'll be able to see how much something will cost, and if they have the money to be able to afford that, then that's great. But it also, they'll have the option to still take that item of clothing out of the door, but they're just renting it. This is no solo venture. Joining Lily in the business is her 30-year-old sister, Sarah. I'm quite excited about us starting what is essentially a family business. It's quite sweet and twee in English in its own way, isn't it? It's like... <laughs> but like any sisters, Lily and Sarah have not always seen eye to eye. You know, I, was, I had reservations about it because we haven't always gotten on well in the past. And actually, out of the whole family, it was probably you and I that were the least likely to do something yeah. together because, you know, we are so different in our personalities. This will be the first time that the sisters have worked together and neither has any retail experience. Yeah, I mean, I was slightly panicking, you know. It's, um, it's quite nerve-wracking. Sarah and I have never run a business before. So, yeah, I mean, there's just so many different things to keep in, to keep in mind, like desks, computers... <laughs> and I think we need some more flowers in this office. <laughs> To make up for zero experience in the rag trade, the girls have hired their first employee. Jess Morris has 15 years' experience in retail, working for luxury brands Vivian Westwood and Agent Provocateur. 
This is my first day at the office. As you can see, my desk is looking very bare and empty. Need the dust, need the computer, need the chair, need everything. Don't even look at it yet. It's too one-dimensional. Because we need to focus on in an ideal world, what it is we want to have in the store. In an ideal world, as in when we ideal when we open up, or ideal when world we open eventually? up. I think when we open up. As part-time brand director, Jess will spend three days a week trying to create a buzz around Lily's shop. The thing is, is that you know it's it's Lily Allen's store in the end of the day, and the press all know about it already. It's amazing. It's tiny. And everybody's going to be watching and saying, you know, oh, you know, she's not going to take it very seriously. She's giving up music. She's opening a little shop. It's a little project. And um, actually, you know, we do want this to be really amazing. The girls have come up with a name for their shop, inspired by a famous Beatles song. Lucy in Disguise. But that is all they've got. Now these three women must find the holy trinity of a successful retail business. The right shop, in the right place, with the right stock. Yeah, write pop songs, see how much money you can make. That was about as business plan as I got. No, this is totally new to me. Doing business plans and... Um, yeah, I don't really think like that. I'm gonna have to start. <laughs> In Britain, the fashion trade is notoriously tough to break into. An independent clothes store has a two-in-three chance of failing in the first year. Yeah, yeah, definitely, but you know what, Lil, listen... Every item sold by Lucy in disguise will be second-hand Lil, or vintage. Winter, we'll be buying for next that summer. means rather than buying in bulk from large wholesalers, each item buy, must be sourced individually, which is a time-consuming process. Lily and Jess have come to a vintage clothes specialist to try to get some stock. OK, to see. So where does it start? We start actually over here. Which... Oh, oh, look. <gasps> That's amazing. I think it's amazing. It looks amazing. 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 That's amazing. Incroyable. Yeah, see, I love that, and I think it's really important for us to have that things amazing? that aren't just dresses as well. Oh, I love that. So far, I have to say, you've liked pretty much everything I've Yeah, shown. I know. I think that's, that's they're amazing. The big challenge is to find clothes not only desirable enough that women will want to rent them. Because we've got absolutely... It's a pant. It's, it's a pant. Oh, my God. But also to cater for every taste, shape and size. There is, like, a whole thing going on with that whole burlesque scene, isn't there? And those girls... I'm so post-burlesque. I know but, yeah. you are, but... Well, don't you think that for a big lady, that's quite a good thing to have in the shop? Who is this big lady who's coming to get me? It's this old dowager. <laughs> Sorry. I have been a whole array of sizes. <laughs> so luckily, I'm coming from a place that is, uh, yeah, empathetic. I think you should try and create a place where everyone can come and, um, you know, feel like they can have fun and get involved. Acquiring an entire shop's worth of vintage couture is an expensive business. To get things started, Lily is bankrolling the entire project. This, this company's actually called, it's a business in disguise, yeah. It's Lily, Lily's wardrobe in disguise as a business. <laughs> but while she's doing the spending, elder sister Sarah has been put in control of the finances. A brave move, as in the family, she has the reputation of being the flaky one. If you'd said to me a year ago that I would be in this position, I would have said, well, you're crazy, because I can't manage my own accounts. Oh, oh my God, Lord, that's amazing. What lot is that? Can I <laughs> to make things worse, all Lily's spending so far has been done through her personal account, making it almost impossible for Sarah to keep track. Lily hasn't yet apportioned the money to the business, per se, so it's still her money that she's spending, so it's really hard to say, stop spending, when she's like, well, it's my money. So, um, until she actually makes that decision of this is the block amount that I am going to invest into the business... Beautiful. It's hard for me to say, this is what you are allowed to spend to make a return feasible within the next couple of years. <laughs> Lily Allen has turned her back on music and is opening a shop renting vintage designer clothes. 
I'm a bit embarrassed by the fact that I'm, I kind of feel like I'm in sort of the office. Like, <laughs> I used to be a pop star. <laughs> As of yet, they don't have a shop. All the clothes they've bought so far share Lily's smoke-filled office with her and her sister Sarah, who's been put in charge of the money. Yeah, it's working really well. I mean, Sarah is, has worked on a budget for a long time, um, and, you know, I haven't. Very rarely speak to my accountant. I've bought my bank manager like the plague. <laughs> just because I'm just scared of them telling me I'm about to run out. Once a week, the girls return home to their mums for a spot of home cooking. Their film producer mum, Alison, shares the house with their younger brother, Alfie, a rising star, stage and screen. Do you realise what Alfie's doing upstairs in his bedroom? What? He's playing a computer game. Yeah. Where you drive around New York. Yeah. And if you crash your car too much that it can't drive anymore, you get out and you beat up somebody else in their car and chuck them out of the car and get in theirs instead. That's nice. Eh? It's also a, a section of it where you can get in a car with a prostitute, have sex with her and then beat her up and not pay her any money. Is that the one and you get extra points if you kill her? Yeah. Can I just say something? No. You're not going to be able to fry up more bacon in time for when his potatoes are ready. So, we're either going to have cold potatoes or just slightly lacking bacon. I disagree. They're up! Mmm, din-dins. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> what the girls like as kids? Really annoying. They used to argue a lot in their teens. Oh, they're totally all, all the time fighting about clothes. Constant arguments about who's taking my T-shirt, that's my belt, take it off right now. And uh, all those arguments. And now they're actually working together in the same field. It's rather ironic. Good night, Yeah, the girl's quite different personalities. Yes, very different. Who's better? <laughs> Lily's much more, you know, no, I can't, actually, I'm not going to say. <laughs> Anything I say will be wrong. No, so what were you going to say? No, I'm not going to say. That's wrong. I'm not going to be offended. I'm an adult. I can handle it. What makes you assume that it's something bad about you? Because I know my mum. <laughs> I wouldn't say anything bad about either of you. I'm just saying you're different. Um, you know, you're more confident. Sarah's, Sarah's less confident. I'm worried Lily is not that great with money. Lily spends too much money, so I worry about that aspect with the with the shop because she's a big overspender and she always has been. But Sarah's probably more organisational. And uh, so I think it'd be good to have Sarah keep an eye on that kind of thing. Because I've never had any money and I know what that's like. I don't overspend. Yes, you do. Yes, you do. <laughs> you, don't, you don't carefully consider every, every spend that you make. Yeah, because I'm not a tight bastard. Yeah, but you have to be with that. You have to be now. I mean, it's that because I'm going into a business, I'm going into retail, but in the past, I don't see why I shouldn't have spent money. I've earned it. It's like, why wouldn't I spend it and enjoy it? It's not overspending, it's just not being like. Well, because when you were a teenager, you hadn't earned it, you spent mine off the credit card. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <coughs> yeah. The two sisters' careers have taken drastically different paths. God, mine and Lily's financial situation are the complete polar opposites. Every time I go to a cash point, I'm like, is it going to let me have this money? I've got to check my online statements pretty much on a daily basis. Um, whereas Lily will just be like signing away, you know. For the past seven years, Sarah has worked in a succession of nightclubs. This is the VIP area. I've worked in clubs a lot over the years. I've historically been quite a big partier. Literally partied my way through two decades. Um, 
and I'm really not joking. Um, in the best possible way, though, I was really good at it. Sarah and I have had a really up-and-down relationship. I mean, people will associate my name with, you know, being a sort of, you know, drunk and a wild child. I'm nothing compared to Sarah. <laughs> you know what? I always wanted a little sister, and I was so excited when Mum told me she was pregnant. And then out came this thing that even from, like, six months old, just did not give a shit what I had to say. 90% of the time, we'd end up, you know, rolling around on the floor, pulling each other's hair out. She gave me two black eyes once. That was quite a low point. You fucking bitch! I fucking hate you! I'm gonna kill you! You can't pick up a kitchen knife and chase her around the house. <laughs> you know, it's probably been really, really difficult for her to see her younger sister doing so well and to have all of this money and all of these opportunities. We were living totally different lives. She was off touring the world, so we really didn't see much of each other, except when we're having screaming arguments and pulling our hair out, you know. Sarah didn't necessarily have, um, you know, the same sort of drive, and why should she? You know, she's a different person, and I think it probably took for me to be, you know, to grow up a little bit and to be more adult, to be able to realise that not everyone is the same and that, you know, some people have different priorities. Then, after a decade of rowing, Lily sought to make peace by releasing a single that was a public apology to her older sister. She called me in Ibiza, must be three years ago now, and she's like, I want you to hit, listen to something. When I put the headphones on and I was like literally just <gasps> oh, like, like I'm welling up now even thinking of that moment because it was really it was really hard to hear because the lyrics of that song admit that she hated me. It was just great that you know she obviously didn't feel like that anymore and wanted to make things better. So I think for, m for me and Sarah to be at a stage where all of those negative feelings have been brushed aside and we can work together... Mm -hmm. Sorry, I'm actually starting to well up. <laughs> um, you know, I think it's, it's amazing. Six weeks since Lily hung up her microphone, Lucy in disguise still has no shop, but a growing collection of vintage clothes, which is getting larger by the minute. Uh, right, so shall we just get opening, then? Lily is investing a quarter of a million pounds of her own money to cover start-up costs, and she's getting through it fast. We are unpacking the stuff that we bought at the auction yesterday. <gasps> I am hyperventilated. <laughs> I love my new job. But with no shop and therefore no customers, the Lucy in Disguise balance sheet has moved firmly into the red. I really, really could not tell you how much we've spent already. I mean, I know straight off the bat that the initial figures that um, were, were put forward as our start-up costs at least are going to have doubled. That's amazing. Yeah. But letting Lily loose at an auction is not the best thing to do to try to save money. I am by nature a very competitive person and I kind of sort of forget that I'm spending money. I, I just think it's, sort of a, I think it's a sort of competition <laughs> between other people in the room. I'm like, no, I'm going to have it. <laughs> oh, shit, I won't grand down. <laughs> okay, it on, has okay. been Lily's ambition to make these luxury designer clothes available to everyone by renting them out. But brand director Jess sees the rental market as one fraught with danger. I, I do, I'm just really nervous about everything being available to rent. I don't know. I just, I mean. Yeah, but the thing is, is if we value that at, you know, sale price, I don't know, a grand and a half, say, right? They're not allowed to take it out of our shop without giving us a grand and a half as a deposit. And if they ruin it, then we take their grand and a half. It's as simple as that. It's like if you go to a hotel to room and they take your credit card, they trash the room. It all just feels a bit messy and a bit complex. Maybe I think it's messy point. and complex if you walk into a shop and you don't really it's know whether not. it's a rental shop or a sales shop. It doesn't shop. matter. If somebody becomes a loyal customer, or we know that they're fantastic, we know that they're not gack heads, so we're going to go out all night and, you know, ruin stuff. And then, if we know them, and if they're fabulous, we just say, do you know what? 
you get to come into the VIP suite. You can rent this. Never done this before. <laughs> Girls, it's your project. I'm only here to help and guide and direct. God, what day is it? I really feel like I need a, some time off. <laughs> with offices packed with expensive designer clothes, it's now time for the girls to find their shop. To help them, they've asked retail guru Mary Portis for advice. But before agreeing to work with the girls, Mary has asked to see their business plan. Hi, girls. Hi, Hi Mary. Nice to meet you. Hi, you too. Take a seat. Okay, so give me a sentence that says what this business is so I can understand it. Okay, um, well, I think that Lucy in Disguise, which is the name of our shop, yeah. um, is a place for everyone um, to come and have a um, dressing up experience and be able to walk out with something. Um, they wouldn't necessarily be able to afford um, to go to said event. Okay, so it's a dressing up experience that they that who can afford? Which market are we talking? Well, about? we're hoping to aim towards women between twenty and thirty. Your readers of Vogue and Grazia Glamour magazine, but can't necessarily afford to stretch to, to everything that they're reading about. But what's your margins? What's your markups on this, these these things? Um, with three different bands, rental bands, £80, £120 or £300 to rent each item out. I mean, so this is like, <laughs> like, couture a lot of it, you know, so... Yeah. Um, you two are lucky. But this is not people's money. This is not the sort of money people have. No, also, and I have to say that I'm completely deluded, you know, I've been earning a lot of money over the past five years, so I have no idea what your average girl would spend in a shop. I mean, I'm going on by what I would go and spend in a shop, which most people would mm. gasp at, quite frankly. You know, it's not, I'm not thinking that everyone's like me, and that's where I need Sarah to come in. But, but you do need to find out what's happening out there. You have to get out and understand how girls live together outside Primrose Hill. I think your prices are too high. I think your market is wrong. Yeah. Maybe we are aiming at the wrong age group. Your brand is that you are accessible and that you're a voice to all these girls. And the minute you go, oh, here we are, £400 because it's what I can afford. Oh, actually, no, I can afford 2000 but I'm giving it to you for £500. They go, stuff it, Lily. Let me tell you something. Honestly, you do exclude them. You do exclude them and at your peril. Look, you, have you bought, how much of this stuff have you bought? Well, um, we've probably got about a thousand items. Actually, more. We've probably spent about fifty-five thousand on clothes, on stock. Who's managing the budgets? <laughs> Me. <laughs> Who's spending the money? Me. <laughs> that already sounds like a hell of a plan, doesn't it? But I have stopped. No, seriously, though, I am—I do mean this. So, do you really want to do this? Yes. Well, I, I really want to do this. I don't want to be a singer anymore. I don't want to go on tour anymore. And this is something that I really love and feel really passionate about. Yes, I'm slightly deluded. I don't really know the marketplace. I have no experience in retail. Okay. 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 Because retail is not an easy life. I, mean, I know it is. Because it's literally blood, sweat, and tears. You've had sleepless I, nights. I can live. Eat and breathe it, though. You know, I've got a hundred percent time commitment to this. It's just you, though. Who else is there? You do need other no, people. Know. You know, no, I've had, I've said that that I'm lonely quite a lot recently. Okay. You know, she's lonely. That's that. You don't want to hear that, do you? <laughs> you don't get upset, are you? <laughs> oh, <you're crying>. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Lily. <laughs> At the moment, we have a Lily concept, which is all cute and fabulous. Um, but you don't have a business. Okay. All right. Nice meeting you. Thank you. Despite her misgivings, Mary agrees to act as the girl's consultant. She will be on hand to help them steer clear of potential retail pitfalls. They've just got an idea at the moment. That's it. It's a nice idea. It's a nice idea. I can't tell you how many nice ideas come into my office. I think really we just need to really figure out. Think things. Yeah. I mean, I think what she said was really valuable, and uh, but she did kind of keep referring to things in terms of um, like banking on my fan base and stuff. But I'm trying to, in my head, that kind of freaks me out because I'm trying to sort of veer away from being Lily Allen. Um, so 
I mean, that scares me slightly. Lily Allen has turned her back on pop and is launching a vintage clothing shop with her sister. Not being on tour means she can knock off at 5 p.m. shop and cook her boyfriend Sam a meal at his bachelor pad, which she shares. Oh. <laughs> it's quite small. There really he is, quite small. I'm <laughs> sorry. Um, do you know this car? I'll give you a tour. <laughs> and that's it. <laughs> no, come on. Um, this is my bedroom. Our bedroom. How, how's he adjusted to having you here? Um, I think he loves it, you know, he gets dinner cooked from every night. Uh, I don't know, you know, he, it's been... You know, we're obviously quite on top of each other. <laughs> <laughs> um, it's you know it's quite it's quite a small place for two people. That's a nice noise. Who is it? I thought I, for the first couple of months I used to think it was the tube. <laughs> so I thought I was such an idiot. I was like, it's so noisy. The tube line must be really close to the ground. He was like, you're an idiot. It's the washing machine upstairs. Uh, <laughs> Excuse me. <laughs> Back at the office, the working day isn't over for Sarah. She's trying to come to terms with the responsibilities that come with being a boss. I don't know. I, I don't feel ready yet. To, well, I feel ready to be a boss, but it's not coming naturally. So I'm kind of trying to think of little tricks to make me... to make me start acting like a boss. You know, I feel like I'm blagging at the moment, which I am, really, but, um... We've been in this office now for a month, and we've been happily buying and trying on clothes, and now it's, you know, if we are going to do this, it's make or break time, we need to know that it's going to work, so we all need to get serious and get on the same page and know what's happening. Between now and launch, it's not a game anymore. There's no turning back. Simple. Do you worry that you'll lose it? Like fame? Do you think you know that? No, it? I want to lose it. I don't. I don't want it. I don't mind. I don't. I don't. I hate being. I hate it. I hate. No, that's not fair. I don't hate it because I don't hate the free stuff. I like it when people write nice things about my music, and that's pretty much where it stops. There was a point last summer where I was, you know, I'd say that I had an eating disorder. I used to vomit after meals. It's not something that I'm proud of, but, um, I tell you what, a lot of people would come up to me telling me how great I looked, and I'd be on the cover of every magazine, people going, wow, Lee looks amazing, look how much weight she's lost. Well, I thought I looked good, and it was great to be able to try on clothes and to walk out and feel like, you know, I looked a million dollars, but when you've been a victim of people saying completely the opposite, um, and suddenly getting all of this positive attention, you want more of it. But I wasn't happy. I really wasn't. Listen, you know, I would love to be the skinniest, miniest person in the world, but I know that I can't do that without being really unhappy. I like food. Hey, Mama. Hey. How's your day, darling? <laughs> April. The girls have been buying stock for the past two months, but shaken up by their consultant Mary Portis's verdict of their business, Lily wants to make sure that Lucy in Disguise is a shop that caters for everyone, not just those fortunate enough to enjoy a pop star lifestyle. We need to go over what yeah, Mary really said. Fantastic. If you think, like Topshop, for instance, their highest, their highest price dress was under 50 quid. We need, we need, to, come in, we uh, need to come in a little bit. Lower Under than that, their in order to catch percent. that age group. So, what do you suggest? What would you like to see at coming in at what, at what price range? You're talking hundred pounds, ninety pounds, ninety-five, yeah, a black yeah, something, or something. For me personally, I don't want anyone to feel intimidated by the shop, whether they be bigger sized or um, or have less money in their purse. 
think I just, want, I just want to reiterate to everyone that yeah. I think it's really, really important that we do invest in those key items at the cheaper end of the scale so as not to eliminate you know, our younger, our younger buyer. That, yeah. Okay? Yeah. Brilliant. Brilliant. I'm glad that we're all agreed. The girls have been planning a buying trip to Los Angeles. Bye. Bye. Armed with Lily's credit card, Sarah is heading out on a mission to bring back cheaper stock for the younger, cash-strapped customers. With Sarah away on her buying trip, Jess, the brand director, is left alone in the office. Normally, to start up something like this, you'd have like a dedicated team of people focusing on it full time together. For a lot of my time, I haven't been able to get on with my job as you know, as brand director, because I've been busy logging in clothes. Do you know what I mean? Hi, it's Jess Morris from Lucy in Disguise. Where are you? Give me a call back. Um, am I going to see you today? It's called support. Just please give me a call to check in. Okay, lots of love. Bye. Yeah, brilliant. London in the end is quite a small place. I do hear that people are going, oh, well, that won't work. And what are they thinking? And, you know, there are always rumblings. And you've just got to really take it with a pinch of salt and think, well, you know, I'm just getting on with it. But then obviously there's always the waking moments when you think, fuck, what if it doesn't work? It has been two months since Lily stepped out of the public eye. I'm excited about all this new stuff that I'm doing with Lucy and, you know, it's... It's... it's um, I don't know, you know, I take... I'm so terrified of failure because I couldn't bear to put my heart and soul into one thing and for it to fall flat on its face. You know, I've kind of opened myself up to so much criticism over the past few years and I've found it really difficult when people knock me down, all this bullshit. But, I mean, I do feel scared and I do feel terrified. Um, it's, um, it's starting something completely different. Um, and, you know, I'm used to people knocking me down um, and I do get upset by it, but... Um, I suppose, you know, by taking myself out of the public eye, Maybe people will take it easier. I hope they will anyway. Nothing happened. Nothing new comes up when I Google myself anymore. One week later than scheduled, Sarah has returned from America with nine suitcases full of vintage clothes. I mean, I'm just really buzzing to be back, really excited. When I got off the plane, it was like... Well, there's all the palm trees and the sequins and this, like, glamorous road trip life I've been living for the last three weeks. But the wheels came off Sarah's road trip when her car ran out of petrol on the way to the airport and she missed her flight back home. She got delayed by a week due to an empty car of petrol. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, she, you know, she had words with me about missing a flight. I had to convince her that that was actually the truth, that that did happen. Um, you know, what can I say? <laughs> Why do you think she believed you? I don't know. I think she's just, she's just worried that flaky Sarah was back, you know? But it wasn't, you know? Do you, when you get in a car, do you say, have we got enough petrol to get to the destination? It's not really something that you'd say, you know? Despite instructions to bring back low-cost clothes, Sarah's hall appears to mainly consist of high-cost evening wear. It's really lovely on, yeah. Really good print. Let's have a look at that. Let's have a look against you. That's uh, a cool jacket. Oh, my God! That was hilarious. How much was that? Um, 
I have to wait till all the receipts get back. I don't know. They're coming back in tomorrow. You know, Sarah is brilliant and has shown how brilliant she is when she's here in the office and she's concentrating on what she's doing. When she's in L.A. with a bunch of her, you know, idiot, flaky mates, it's a different story. Go on, how much was it? Uh, that one was, I think, 650. So... How much was that one? It was about 450. Oh, that's quite expensive. Oh, that is expensive. This could be sold for $450. Yeah, absolutely, yeah. So it's about 300 quid. Is it um, that would mean we have to sell it for 600 doesn't it? Yeah. Because yeah. it's my money, you know. It's my money that I've worked really, really hard to make. So she's got to look after it. Can't prove to me that she can run this thing and do it competently, then I'll have to pull the plug on that thing. And how much did you spend on booze and getting shit paid? <laughs> <laughs> May. Lily and Sarah are to be the stars of a photo shoot promoting Lucy in disguise. Someone was coming down to get us, but if Lily's taking this opportunity for a last minute, Siggy, so will I. While Sarah's enjoying the attention... It's nice, it's a treat for me. Lily is still fuming over her sister's trip to America. Sarah, now her nickname's Fairy for a reason, OK? I think we need to get back in unison and, and kind of get... still feeling a little bit disjointed after I got back from America. She's come back and there's not enough stuff right at the, you know, bottom end and... I feel like, you know, it's difficult to source those things, but she has had three weeks in America to do that, and I feel like, you know, there were definitely some mornings where she would have been hungover, and she could have spent that time trawling markets and probably didn't. You know, I just want her to, to really, really know and believe that I've got this company's best interests at heart 24-7 and that it's my top, top, top priority and that nothing else matters. Well, not nothing else, but, you know, that's what I really, really care about. This time last year, my main worry was what clothes I was going to wear on stage, and now I've got, you know, half a million quid out of the bank, pretty much. I feel a bit... Um, I'm scared of that. Five weeks ago, Mary Portis agreed to help the girls launch their new shop. She's worried that they're being unrealistic about what their customers will be prepared to pay to rent their frocks. So Mary has arranged a focus group of eight women who have been encouraged to talk openly about the collection. Unaware that behind a two-way mirror, they're being watched. So basically what I'm going to do now is I'm going to introduce you to, uh, to actually what, what we do have, which is a new retail concept. Um, it's going to be a store in central London. The way it will work is you will actually be able to, to hire these different garments. I really would like to get your views on this concept. So what do you think of this idea of, of being able to hire out these fantastic pieces? Well, do you like it? Do I, you, love, I love you it. Like it. Okay. I like the idea that it's actually, an if it is going to be an accessible price point, so you, it's more for a customer to wear. I think it could work. I'm not, I don't think it's a, I think it's an okay idea. Yeah. I'd probably rent something. Well, I'm going to go through a few specific items. I'm going to start with uh, this. Love it. Yeah. yeah. How much would you expect or be prepared to pay to rent this for three days? How much? How, How much? much? How much do you think it would be? So, a piece like that, forty. Okay. Does someone want to want to make and reveal the price on there? Mm -hmm. Oh, fifty-five. I think it's too much because for you know maybe twice that you could go and buy it from a vintage shop and yeah. then you'd have it forever yeah. Yeah. you're talking about yeah. paying the excess it's like 85 pounds yeah, for something exactly. you're going to wear for three days yeah. i don't think that's reasonable at all the next dress is a 1970s aussie clark i think it's 140. That wouldn't be. Okay. i'd say around sort of 120. for what i could afford about 80. Mm -hmm. well this one 
is 320. <gasps> what? <laughs> Are you joking? <laughs> 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 You think that's too much? Far well, too much. Why? I could get that if I scoured I eBay. No, you could not. If you scour in certain vintage shops, it's possible to find something like that for less. If I went through enough shops, I could get one in Paris in the store that I know. Fuck off. Um, this concept has actually been developed by Lily Allen and her sister Sarah. Why are you doing this bit now? So uh, I'll, I'll, I'll send you They're testing how relevant uh, your name you is to their opinion. Yeah. When she started wearing the vintage dresses with the trainers, like the fact that her whole, how she pushed herself originally as a pop star, that she set herself aside yeah. from the whole stylist and she was quite innovative about how she styled herself. They think she should be given full marks for that. When you mentioned that it was her shop, it, I don't, I, it was, I sort of felt a little bit old, as opposed to excited about it. Someone yeah. hasn't got a tag on the back saying Lily Allen. Yeah, Shop. exactly. <laughs> and that's why that's <laughs> I come back to <laughs> Lily has heard enough. Well, so sorry, Mary. I'll see you later. I'll give you a call. Like, if I'm actually honest about it, I don't mind. Like, she could have, she could own the shop, she could not own the shop. Yeah. It's still a concept that would interest yeah. me. Oh, Does this happen? They probably from zinc. Um, they are. It, it, when I say inspired by, I don't mean that they're they're not knockoffs. It is reminiscent of my mother's old wardrobe from Pakistan. Well, <laughs> Lily's walked out, and you just can't do this. Yeah, you, know, you just can't do this. And uh, you know, whilst I, I feel for her, you know, here we have gold dust information. Even if they say things we don't want to hear. It's nevertheless the truth. <laughs> it's bonkers. It's absolutely bonkers. Next week. I love it. The hunt is on for the perfect location. What is this? Right. This isn't a shop. We don't want this. No way, Lily. It's not a shop. It's an office. Lily makes a big announcement. That's me. I'm preggers. I would never say I'm preggers. Maybe prego. But the cash flow is in crisis. Oh, shit. I don't want to go to the bank. I hate talking about money. It makes me feel sick.